Why do we need a sawmill? Well, we probably don't. But it's a great way to show you what to expect and to see if it's worth purchasing. The sawmill came in a metal fabricated crate with a lift off lid with surprisingly very little packing material. There were several boxes all with a decent amount of weight so I slowly started moving them one by one from the delivery area to their new home. Now I'm moving the sawmill out to my backyard. This is kind of like a carport slash tractor shed. I keep a bunch of random stuff like my firewood and some other car pieces. It's a great place to set up the sawmill and keep it out of the weather. For now we're gonna just gonna set this up on the concrete but I eventually plan to have a trailer to set this on so I'm not gonna secure it permanently to the floor. With the metal sitting directly on a concrete and all the vibration from a sawmill, there's a very good chance it'll wear away that paint and just rust pretty quick. So I'm going to try and prevent that by adding some old decking boards underneath everything. After I got the frame together, I looked at the engine and saw, and I realized that this thing was a lot heavier than I thought it would be. In fact, I know I couldn't lift it myself, and I don't even think my neighbor and I could even lift it safely. So I had to build a wooden gantry. This thing was awesome. It was simple to build, and it allowed me to lift this saw up and easily and put it into place. If you'd like to see how I built this unit, I'll put a link to that in the description, so make sure you check it out. Otherwise, let's get back to this build. For those of you who buy tools at Harbor Freight, well, you know the instruction manuals in most cases are lacking. And in this case, it's kind of a hit and miss. When I was putting a frame together, it was very helpful. When I was putting the rest of the unit together, well, it was not really that great. Uh, in fact, I had to sit there and stare at the pictures a good bit to figure it out. So just be prepared. Now that we had this fully assembled, I had to go through and check all the tolerances on the blade, make sure everything is set up correctly. And as far as I can tell from the factory, it is. So now we need to add some fuel, oil, and some water, and we can start cutting a log. Just a little tip, when you're adding fuel, lower the sawmill to its lowest position, and it makes it so much easier. We have fuel and oil now in the engine. Let's see if this thing will crank for the first time. We're gonna turn the fuel on, course turn the choke on, make sure the throttle is at the lowest position, and let's give this a shot. It runs, and only on the fourth pull. I've had more issues with lawnmower engines, so that's a good sign. The piece I'm gonna start with is this piece of cedar. I cut this cedar down probably about three, four years ago, and uh, I just kind of pushed it to the side towards the woods. So we're gonna try and cut this up. If you ever happen to use a sawmill, you need to look at the log before you put it on. We have a bunch of dirt and debris and mud on this for sitting so long, so we gotta clean most of this off before we can put it on the sawmill or it'll dull the blade. Now look what just got delivered. This would have been helpful trying to get the log up onto the sawmill, but it's definitely gonna be helpful trying to do the rest of it. I almost forgot, before we can use the sawmill, I had to knock off any extra limbs that were sticking out. So I grabbed my chainsaw and made quick work of that. Now here's the first cut. It's a little bit close to the edge on this end, but as we get to the larger side, you can really start to see some color pop. Ooh, that is pretty. Let's take a look at the second cut. Ooh, that is so much more pretty. Looks like a little spalting going on as well. Now we have a nice flat surface. Let's flip this thing upside down so we can cut the other side. There we go. Oh, 
Yeah. Wow. How about that? Now we flip this log back over one more time because we think it looks a little bit better on this side, particularly the edges, because we want to cut a two inch slab off of it this time to hopefully make a table with in the future. Oh yeah. Look at that cedar. My turn to play. So how was the first cut? It was great. It's like a treasure hunt. You never know what you're gonna find. Final thoughts on a sawmill. Now this thing is awesome. I had so much fun playing with this and it's just a great tool for me. I was able to turn what looked like was just gonna be firewood into some awesome slabs of wood. Now, of course, I'm a beginner at this, so I'm gonna need a lot more practice at this to even become good at it. I'm sure I made a bunch of mistakes in the process of this. I may have to tune the sawmill a little bit better in some areas to make it work even better for us. But overall, I'm very happy for how it turned out. Now, of course, this is a Harbor Freight version. It is cheaper than most sawmills. It's very basic too. It doesn't have all the fancy features that some of the other sawmills have. So keep that in mind. Now, if you're interested in, in turning what could be a sawmill into a sawmill, business, I'd strongly suggest purchasing one of the fancier versions. Again, it has a lot more features and would just make this a lot easier and a lot faster for those who want a business from it. So overall, great purchase. I'm very excited to continue using this and uh, plan on making a lot more projects with it. So with that said, I hope you enjoyed this video. So get out in your shop and have fun building.